So let's move on uh, on the show uh, now and we'll travel to Cross River. Uh, something heartwarming happening, uh, talking about football uh, in uh, that state. You know, it's all been stories about, uh, for some of the clubs, not all, but for some, stories of neglect, stories of abandonment. And um, when a governor shows up and um, splashes the catch, uh, donate buses, and even put some of this what is on payroll uh, is going to make the news. So we're going to cross river uh, and talk about that. And um, it's interesting, um, Cecilia and uh, Biodu, it's interesting to have that, um, that the governor will uh, look at what's going on uh, with the state-owned clubs and see, okay, let me make things better for you guys. Let me show my support. And then everybody has been, you know, uh, congratulating the governor for doing that. I think it's, it's a good one. But going forward, how much of how, how how long will this continue to happen? Because it won't be there forever. Yeah. If it leaves tomorrow, will there be continuity? I think it's high time we we sit down and analyze where our sport is and support those yeah. who truly and genuinely wants to help our sports to yeah. grow. Yeah. And we need to gradually start bringing sports out of the states. Yeah. Um, uh, run stuff. Make yourself so skinny. Exactly. So yeah. I think for me, if I have to advise the governor, I think rather than going straight into this, he should have called for some kind of research and say, okay, you know what? Let's research into how we can make this thing sustainable All right. and come up with a final solution yeah. and then give them whatever I want to give them as a token and tell them it won't continue forever. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Making themselves sustainable. But, it, but it's still uh, a very, very, uh, but I just that's very, very, good. very commendable oh, yes. uh, gesture. So let, let's take you there, uh, listen to, uh, let's see the pictures from across the river. We'll listen to uh, the governor, uh, also a member of the uh, supporters club and uh, what he had to say about that event. I will come back for more sports this morning. Our, our subvention is three million, you know. By the time we pay salaries, we have barely 900,000 left. We play about six matches a month. Each match <coughs> costs about that 900, home or away. Because we take off referees, we take off every logistics. Your Excellency, please, sir, we are begging you in the name of God. The clubs are in debt because we must go into the market to borrow. We ask that at least a subvention of a target 10 million, Your Excellency, will take care of the clubs. Their players are supposed to collect allowances. We can't remember when we paid them allowances. So, Your Excellency, we are begging. Also, there is no boss. <coughs> These players trek. We have some of them in the Flying Eagles. They trek to and fro. Matches sometimes going to Lagos takes three days. Your Excellency, we need a 32-seater bus, two for the teams. I cannot guarantee at this point in time what the state government can do. But from Ayade Motors, I will donate one of my own personal coaster bus to Pelican. A new salary, whatever the salary is in a month, multiplied by 100, that will be the increase in the allowance that will come in as subvention to ensure that the fan club also gets her own monthly payment. I have, to make sure, I have to make sure that it really brings value. We will backdate it to January 1st. So that we oh! Like I said, uh, very commendable. And you could, you could see uh, the noise, <laughs> the dance, and you know, and it's very, very uh, commendable. So we hope that um, the structures that will be built that will make things self-sustaining and promises kept. But let's leave it at that and uh, go to women's football. Ah, let's go to the pitch now. What's happening right yeah. there? Match day five of the Nigerian Women's Football League. Group A, we had some interesting result. The game between Confluence Queens and Shaw Babes, that game ended. 3-2, feast of goals there, Bias of Queens and Rivers Angels, no fireworks there at all, it mm. ended goalless. Then you also have uh, the game between Heartland Queens and Ibom Angels, 1-0 Ibom Angels beating Heartland by Longo. Edo Queens and Delta Queens also ending goalless in that. We'll move straight to Group B, now just two games decided because more games will be played today in that one. You have the Sunshine Stars and FC Robo, 2-1 uh, Sunshine winning. Uh, Jukodolu, for Sunshine Stars, I think is a good one for, for them actually. Being able to, Sunshine Queens, being able to get something out of that. Then you have a Jukodolu Babes and Nasra Amazons. Expected Nasra Amazons to get a uh, victory out of this one, but somehow it's ended goalless. For today, 
we have a Pelican Stars and of course you have Abia Angels. Pelican Stars will be spoiled on yeah. by that gesture from the governor mm -hmm. to beat Abia Angels. And since they're playing at home, Oshun Babes and the number one queens, Oshun Babes needs to get their first three points uh, this season because their position is really not looking good at all. Now let's talk about the reschedule games from the Nigerian Professional uh, Football League uh, where you have some interesting results also yeah. coming from the Richard games. You know, Aqua United couldn't win at home. Plata United went there to get a point from there. You have Aimba and Ifa Aimba too. Aimba I mean, too. We're almost losing that game. We're almost losing towards the, uh, well, the goalkeeper, Ifa Aimba. You know, well, good, kind of. <laughs> um, goal. <laughs> um, goal. Yeah. But the thing has happened there. <laughs> it ended one or Then the game between Yobe Desert Stars and MFM. Yobe Desert Stars. Dying moments. Yeah. Dying moments. MFM. As heartbreaking. Yeah. MFM could have, you know, at least come back with at least a point there, but then it just didn't happen for them in that one. Uh, Mr. Abbey, I know you're surprised with some of the interesting results, guys. A way victory from the women's side. Of course, you have some uh, draws. Okay. Yeah, looking at the standings now, what is looking like? Lobby Stars are still at the top, 37 points from 19 matches. Canopilla is still there, uh, Katsina is still there. Plato United, that's where the movement is because of what happened uh, yesterday. Got a point. Niger Tornadoes, they've dropped down now to feet. Nugu Rangers, after 20 matches, 29. Aqua United moving up slowly, but then yeah. they still have more games in hand. Aimba could have won that, but they just couldn't. If I Aimba still 10th. And Rivers United still ninth on the sports and relegation battle academy warriors, Quara, Sunshine Stars, and Heartland. Basically, everybody in yellow. Yeah. Everybody in yellow. Don't want your team to be in yellow. Battling. <laughs> okay. Battling. Uh, you know, uh, there's something there's something interesting I wanted to get your thoughts on. Since we're talking about Carlo Pilas, uh, let's talk about this player. Um, I know you're not busy. You probably have heard the name Junior Locosa. Um, a player on the domestic scene, painting everywhere red uh, with goals. He, uh, even his improvements, his goals have even caused the national team manager to t start talking uh, about it because every time he sits in front of journalists, they say, have you heard of the name uh, Junior Locosa? But do you think it's late for anybody at this stage where in May to get crashed into the World Cup team? Nothing is, impo nothing is impossible. Okay. If the manager can spot one quality he needs to add to his team right now, and he can get it in that guy, that guy is on his way to the World Cup. So that is that. But looking at our players locally, I think um, we still have one or two jobs to do on our players okay. to make them a real finished product. This guy is very good. I've just seen one or two goals he scored, and all I want to look at is his technique. Yeah. And he got it. But it needs to be quickly exposed and given the right atmosphere to... Maybe the World Cup is too early. It, it's too early for okay. me. Okay. All right. Let's listen to uh, the Super Eagles technical advisor, coach, whatever you want to call him, talking about uh, Canopilla's Junior Locosa. They will come the 21st, but it's a little early for our players because the players finish on the 19th or on the 16th, and so we cannot have them all on the uh, 21st, so it must be a mixed team with Chan players, but could be interesting to see that also. We need good conditions for training. I wanted to start in Nigeria because in Nigeria, I think there is atmosphere. They don't know in Europe the players who are not coming here. The, the big attend, the motivation of the public waiting for the World Cup and uh, the passion will be good for them to feel that uh, one week in Nigeria. From Junior has been uh, observed by my friend uh, Salisu and my colleague uh, who is living in Kanu. And uh, I know that he's scoring goals. I asked him, it's a good player, why, why you didn't take him for the Chan team? <laughs> I could see him. <laughs> I could see him for uh, one month. So he said, yeah, he was not so good in the moment in, uh, in January. But uh, yes, we will have a look also on him. This